Okay, so yeah, thank you for joining our session on mentor and mentee framework. Um, just a, a couple of quick introductions. So I'm Mark Boost, CEO of Sivo. Um, I've had about a 20 year career in technology companies mixed from um, cybersecurity, telecommunications, data centers, and then more recently, Sivo's uh, cloud computing company. Um, but yeah, we're here today to talk about uh, the mentor and mentee framework that we're developing, Canal and myself. Um, this is going to be released at um, QCon uh, in Amsterdam, um, so it's still a work in progress. We've got some details at the end about uh, how you can get more involved in that and contribute to it. Um, we'll, be, we'll be creating a GitHub page where people, people can uh, contribute to that. That's a little bit about, about me, Kunal. Hey everyone, my name is Kunal. I have 20 months of experience. I <laughs> graduated this year and uh, been contributing to open source since my freshman year. I love content creation, I love DevRel, I love cloud native, and uh, yeah, today we want to talk about our experiences, looking forward to it. Yeah, and it's also worth mentioning, I currently mentor two people, Kunal, um, and also someone else that, that works at Sivo. Okay, so to kick things off, I'm going to hand over to Kunal, who's going to talk a little, little bit about finding a mentor. So I oftentimes get this question, like, how do we find a mentor, and sometimes, you know, like, uh, people reach out to you like, hey, I have this question, or they just sometimes just say hi. And without knowing much about the person, you sometimes often like reach out to them. And uh, oftentimes I like get a question, hey Kunal, can you help me with blockchain? I've never done blockchain in my life. So this is a slide for that. Ensure that the mentors that you are looking forward to, they are also well suited to your interests and your goals. So you wanna get into a specific technology or if you the way I look at it is I also try to resonate with other people, like what uh, sort of experiences did they have when they were 20 years old? Uh, and I would like to do that as well. So make sure that you, you do that. And the second thing is how to get in touch. Social media is great for that, it's pretty obvious. Um, follow people on social media, but not just follow them. Uh, the way, the, what I mean by following is networking. So actually being interested in, in what the work they are doing, learning more from their experiences, and just engaging with them and seeing what they're up to. Don't be afraid to reach out. It's another good point when we follow up on social media. So you're all at KubeCon, so you might find so many amazing speakers over here that you can think, okay, I would be interested in what they're working on. Let's you know, ask them for help or mentorship or their experiences. So don't be afraid to reach out to people. And uh, there are some, some of the you know, obvious uh, statements like be polite and make sure you're giving enough context. So don't, don't just say hi. Uh, you know, most of the time people do that. So don't be afraid to reach out. Most of the time, like, folks may reply, but only if you give uh, enough context. So make it easy for the person to help them, help you. And yeah, this is a point I was mentioning. Reach out in a professional manner. So like, hey, my name is, you know, I'm Kunal, and this is, these are my experiences, and uh, this is what I'm looking forward to. I saw your talk, or I saw your blog post, or I'm really passionate about this technology. I saw you have work in, work in them. So. That's, you know, you're giving enough context and you're reaching out respectfully and politely. De demonstrate your dedication to, to learning and your passion for the subject. I really like to bring in, like, this is concept of, like, proof of work and just showing uh, responsibilities or, like, uh, like uh, enthusiasm. Like, hey, I would like to learn more about this and this is what I've already researched or whatever. So now the mentor would be like, oh, they are genuinely interested. Like, he's, all, he's done his research and he's done this and he's done that. So, uh, make sure that your dedication is also, and your learning passion for the subject, it's also clear, uh, you know, in the beginning. Now I'd like to hand over to Mark for, you know, developing a clear plan yeah. for your mentee. Yeah. Thank you. Um, before we get into that, actually, we're going to do a couple of Slido um, questions. Yeah, so we had some switch. of the questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Kunal loves a Slido. So if you question. can just scan this, this is, by the way, completely anonymous, so no personal data is here, and you just scan this, from your phone, and you'll be presented with a set of uh, questions. So just trying to gather more information, and folks who are joining virtually, you can also take part in this. You can still see the QR code on the screen. So this one is for mentors only, people who are looking to mentor. So you can share if you're currently a mentor, have previously been a mentor, or you know, you're looking to mentor some people, or if you're not looking to mentor. That's quite interesting. Yeah. So there's been some previous mentors here, by the looks of it. 
and some people that are currently mentoring quite a lot, and some people looking to mentor, and a few not looking to mentor. Interesting. Next one. Next one. <coughs> this one is for the mentees. By the way, this is not limited by age. So even if you're looking to be a mentee, if you're like, you know, you're just starting with Cloud Native irrespective of how old you are, definitely go for it. It looks like there's a few people who are currently a mentee, some people looking for one, some people have previously been a mentee, quite a lot. So I was kind of thinking it could be quite fun <laughs> afterwards to do a bit of a, a speed dating of uh, trying to put together the mentees and the mentors, <laughs> so we should get everyone out after and try and do that. Cool, sure. Get back into the... Yeah, there's one more. Oh, there's one more. Oh, yeah, of course. So if you just write some of the challenges you face as a mentee, it will populate in the word cloud. For folks who are just joining us, you can scan this QR code and take part in the fun little survey. It's completely anonymous. Or if you're a mentor... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what about me? <laughs> so yeah, if you're a mentor or if you have... Uh, a ment if you have a mentee as a mentor, then uh, then you can uh, also share what some of the challenges your mentees face. Yeah, we might pick some of these up uh, at the end as well if you've got some time to discuss some of those. So it's communication and goal-oriented people, finding a mentor. Oh, that's communication. That's a good one. Four more people typing. We'll move forward. Okay, should we move on? A lot of good points that we have already you know, planned to cover in this session, so thank you for joining. All right, I'll leave that open so you can. Right. Okay, so you know, the next point we wanted to discuss was developing a, a clear plan. And I think you know, when you're creating that relationship, you've got to make sure um, you know, each other is getting what they want from that from that relationship between the mentor and the mentee. And first of all, you've got to agree a frequency of how often you should meet and discuss um, all the different goals and, and things that you can learn. So Canal and myself, uh, we do fortnightly meetings. That's, that's what we found is best. Uh, sometimes weekly feels too often, especially if I set some tasks or some mm. things. It's not long to come back and um, you know, a week, week later to review those. So I think fortnightly feels really good for us. Um, and also monthly feels too long. You know, too much time passes. So that's what our recommendation is, is to agree that, that sort of fortnightly frequency. Agree a session format as well, um, and don't be too rigid with that. It's really important to have some sort of structure to the way it works, and the way that we do things generally is that we pick a subject for each, each session. Um, we've talked about things like leadership, we've talked about time management, we've talked about, um, I think you even mentioned uh, talked about finances, you said, oh, how can you help me with my personal finances? <laughs> you know, so it, it doesn't have to be work-related yep. as well. Um, so we do it session by session basis, have a focus, but sometimes we just have a, just a general catch up, don't we, and just talk about other things as well, just whatever comes up. So don't be too rigid, you know, keep it fluid. And then also it's really important to have both some short term and long term objectives. Um, so we put together a five year plan and that was jointly uh, agreed, so it wasn't just me saying that this is what you're going to do for five years, it was something that we agreed together, made sure it aligned with Canal's interests, made sure it aligned with his goals. Um, and I had some short-term objectives as well that you can, that you can tackle quite quickly, um, but aim for those longer ones over time as well. So it's important to have a really strong plan in that sense. Okay, back over to you. Yeah, I'm going to just share a little bit about uh, how to be a good mentee. So this is once after you have found a mentor. And uh, the first one is the most important one. It's also at conferences like this, you know, in Mahara for about uh, code of conduct. So please respect your mentor. Their time is valuable, and you know you should realize they have a busy schedule, so he's a CEO, so I know he's you know, pretty busy. And if you show some responsibility uh, with your mentors, then uh, they would also appreciate it. If you talk a general example of, let's say, open source, so you get stuck at, you're contributing to a project, you get stuck somewhere, you ask the maintainers, okay, I'm stuck here, what do I do? So most of the time, they will just direct you to uh, like a resource, they'll be like, hey, this is what you can check out or, or whatever. Uh, if they don't have the right answer, they won't like, give you the right answer on spot. They will just give you resources. 
So you have to value their time. Other than that, honor your commitments. And uh, what, what I mean by that is if you have commitments, like for example, if you have set a meeting and you're late to that meeting, now that's wasting the time of the mentors as well. And uh, you know, don't be late, so honor your commitments. Uh, and uh, if they're relying on you for something, make sure you do that. And uh, you can also you know, be considerate, uh, you know, con considerate of their uh, busy schedule. So for example, if someone reschedules a meeting at the last minute, you know, your mentor, so you should be, uh, you know, take that into account because you know that they have a busy schedule. It's a two-way relationship. It's not just, you know, the mentor giving it back to the mentee. It's, it's both ways. So it's a mentee helping the mentor as well. And there are various ways by which you can just get started. So in the previous slides, you mentioned follow people on socials. That's fine, Kunal, done. What next? So contribute, uh, contribute to community, open source projects, you can do writing, you can advocate uh, stuff on socials, you can offer help or support wherever possible, like they're running an event or you know, the company's running some initiatives or if it's an open source project, then you know, there are so many showcases here. I met so many students who were actually helping out at the maintainer tracks as well, which is pretty amazing because CNCF has the LFX program, so so many mentees graduate from them, and after that, they become the maintainers. So the, mentor, so, so the mentees become the mentors <laughs> after a while. Um, so yeah, offer help and support wherever possible. Be polite and respectful. It's pretty self-explanatory. I'll pass it over to Mark, how to be a good mentor. Thanks, Kunal. I think the first point I want to make here really is about empathy. Um, I think that's the most important thing when you're being a mentor is to build trust with the mentee. Um, it's not going to work, the relationship's not going to work if you can't build that trust and openness. So, and it should be not just about um, them and the work that they're doing, it should be more than that. It should be getting to know them as a person, getting to know their personal interests. You know, um, what movies do they watch? Um, recently with the other um, mentee that I work with, we were talking about all the different Netflix series and, uh, that they watch and she was recommending some to me, I was recommending some to her. We got to know each other, found some common ground. Um, but also asked her, you know, have brothers and sisters she had and things like that, got to know as a person what her interests were growing up, what interests away, away from work as well. So I think it's important if you're going to build that, that trust and uh, relationship to find that common ground and understand each other. Uh, but similar to what, what uh, Canal said, it's a two-way relationship um, and it's, it's not just about um, the mentor always just talking to the mentee, saying, you know, I've been there, I've, de I've done it, I've seen it. There's a lot you can actually learn the other way as well, and um, you, you want to make sure you provide an opportunity for people to challenge you. You know, maybe you you shouldn't. Maybe Canal's got ideas. He does challenge me quite a lot, actually. You know, he does. Sometimes we talk about a subject, and he say, might say, "Well, I don't agree with that," and I think that's that's a really you can create that environment where people can actually do that and have that empathy for each other. That if if we question each other, that it's, it's not done in a you know in a way. Um, that's unprofessional, it's just that we respect each other and we respect each other's opinions. So, um, and also, I think it's really important as a mentor, I, I think I can learn from the mentee. You know, there's the expression of you can't treat, uh, teach old dogs new tricks, but um, Canal's always teaching me things and uh, um, probably more on things like TikTok and social media and things that I don't understand because I'm quite old now. But um, yeah, so I think it's given that platform so they can actually. Um, contribute back as well, like the, the point that um, Canal made before. And I think it's important really to be available for your mentee away from these structured sessions. You know, they might have um, some questions, you know, and they, they should feel comfortable to be able to ask those, to call you. Um, maybe there's something personal in their personal life that's happening and they want to reach out and speak to you. So making yourself available for them uh, is really important to, again, build that empathy, build that trust that's so important. And the other thing that we always do is we say, look, let's, let's make these sessions fun. You know, they're not just about pure learning. That's what you said about sometimes we have a, a more of an unstructured session where we just talk about general things, about life in general, um, and things like that. So have some fun with it, because that, that, that's if we learn, learn our best when we're having fun and we're enjoying things. And yeah, now it's another point, very important, which is reviewing your progress. I, I, I've been following this ever since I was in my freshman year. So the way I do it is like having some goals and then periodically syncing in within yourself with, with yourself and once you have a mentor and with your mentor to helping you, like, okay, this is what we planned for the for the next three months. This is where we are and this is how we're doing. So when I was in let's say the so I've been a part of a lot of um, mentorship programs while I was a student, like Google Sum of Code, 
CNCF internships or whatever, there also you get a mentor and they review it periodically every month with you. Like, okay, the first evaluation, second evaluation, these were the projects that you know we wanted to do and, and stuff like that. So this can be very helpful for people who mentor in such such programs as well, their mentees. Um, it, it builds, it, it, it gives you, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Retrospective. So it gives you an, op uh, an opportunity to retrospect on the previous uh, cycle. And create a, an environment for honest and constructive feedback. There are two types of people. Some, if you give someone a fee constructive feedback, they will like, they will be like, okay, be honest with me. Tell me, you know, what, where am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Some people take it to heart. Uh, I'm personally like more on the open open side. Like, tell me what I'm doing wrong, and I can help improve it. So it's also about how you take it. The mentor is. People are saying that you know you can improve or something because you're because of your benefit only, so you should take that into consideration. You should not take that too hard. Constructive criticism in general, you should never take it too hard. Um, if, if someone is just saying, hey, you are, you don't know anything, that's, that's not constructive criticism, right? Um, so honest and constructive feedback, you should always, you, know, you should create an environment for that and you should take that uh, very seriously. Yeah. Okay, and just to round up, I guess, the come back to empathy really, um, empathy is the key. I believe that, that building that trust and that relationship. So it's, it's about having that openness, um, getting to know each other, building common ground, um, being trustful of each other and respectful of each other. Um, so that, that's really important. And then similar to um, what Canal was saying about honest feedback, we should create an environment where we can talk openly and honestly, um, but it should be seen as constructive. Uh, and sometimes you know, things, there are things that people have to learn to improve. Um, and um, you know they're going to always help you develop. Like you now, said, maybe um, no one likes being criticised as such. But it's, if it can be delivered in a, in a constructive way, but flip side on the, on the other side, the person has to receive it in the way that it was intended. Um, so it's trying to get that balance right and, and to make sure it's professionally and it's constructive in that regard. And yeah, as I said, don't take it to heart. I think um, the most important thing here is reflect. Um, take time to reflect. You know. So some criticism can be, you can, you can take it um, a bit more personally sometimes, but it's important just to reflect on that, and, and especially if you've got that, that empathy in the relationship, you know, you can, you can really build and, and learn from that by reflecting later. Must find common ground. This is really important. You must find that common ground and have that trust built in. I've probably mentioned that a few times now, but it's really important that you do build that, that common ground and trust between each other. And if all else fails, <laughs> probably find another mentor, because <laughs> if you try, you know, we're both trying to be as empathetic as, as we can, but sometimes it maybe it's just um, not meant to be, and find another mentor, it's not working out. Be honest with each other again, you know, this is not working, I think we should, we should find someone else. But don't, certainly try everything else first, but if it's not working, don't carry on, uh, in a way. Yeah, so. you can reduce the risk of this when we started with the first slide, which is find the mentors you can, like, resonate with and with common interests. Yeah. Hasn't happened with me ever. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so. Yeah, so we have no, if you have any questions. Yeah, oh. Thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. So I just had one question. So in terms of uh, this mentor-mentee model, if you're having a one-to-one mentor-mentee model, that's pretty straightforward that you are really deeply engaged with the mentee, and from the mentee side, they're deeply engaged with the mentor. But in a case where a mentor is training or interacting with multiple mentees, uh, how do you do that context switching and maintain that empathy towards each and every mentee? Because uh, depending on the size of an organization, they could be one to one or one to even 20 mentees at, at the same time. So how, do you, how would you do that context switching? Sorry, I've missed some of that. Can you talk a bit? Louder, is that okay just to go? Okay. Ask uh, it in. Yeah. yeah, it might be the, the mask. Okay. So what I was asking was that, uh, you, so basically if you're having a one-to-one -one mentor mentee model, uh, that would be easier to maintain because you're just dedicated yep. towards one person. One person, person yeah. But in case a mentor is men uh, like mentoring more than one person, so probably 10, 15, 20 people. Yep. So how do you maintain that empathy towards all of the mentees? And how difficult would it to be uh, doing that context switching between yep. multiple mentees? Kind of like running a company, do you know? Yeah, I guess, I mean, the mentorships I do are, are on a one-to-one -one basis. So I've not done mentorships where there's a group of people. So we have those one-to-one -one sessions. But like you say, I guess, yeah, there's, 
as a, as a CEO, I, I guess I'm talking to people in general sometimes, not formally mentoring, but um, offering advice. But it comes back to the empathy, isn't it? It's trying to understand people, treat each person individually as well, and giving them enough time, share your time around where you can. Well, it depends on the environment that you're doing it, of course. But I think it's um, not treating everyone the same as well. I think it's really important to understand each individual and what actually motivates them, what makes them tick, what, the best way that they learn. It's harder in a group because you have to kind of present it to everyone. And, but um, I think I'll try and include people and um, make sure it's fully inclusive, give enough attention to every person within that, that kind of environment. With, with me, like, I'm a community. So I started a Discord channel. It has 55,000 people on now. So it doesn't, so even though they learn from like the content I create or whatever, I can't physically, it's impossible for me to engage with every single person. And if you have, let's say, students contributing to your projects, let's say 20, 30 students. So some of the slides that we had, like an empathy one, good communication practices, being polite, respectful, these, these, uh, these qualities are not limited by numbers. Everyone can implement those. But, but I think like if you're, if you're talking about, if you have a group, that actually, I believe, makes things a little bit more easier because now you have a, a learning environment where you know people are also like basically you have the way I like to put it. If you're having 20 people, now you have 20 mentors because they are also learning. And being a beginner is one of the best skills that you can have. Uh, that was a quote from Matt uh, from the last KubeCon. There was a session on uh, marketing things. So being a mentor, being a beginner is one of the best skills you can have. And uh, if you're learning together in public with, with like other beginners, I think that should be that should be pretty good for you. So, if you have one mentor, 20 mentees, uh, and we talked about like mentor, mentors are also learning from mentees. So you're all a bunch of 21 mentees learning from each other. Uh, I can say that because I have a, a big community, been teaching in, high, in in universities and programming boot camps since like five years uh, across India and now 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 in London. So, yeah, that that works really well. So. I would recommend that. Yeah, thank you for the question. Okay. Uh, first of all, great slides. Uh, I don't see them in the sked, so I would love to have them in the sked so I can use them for reference later. So if you could upload that, that would be great. Uh, my questions are of two parts. So your last slide said if you cannot find the right mentor, look for another one. Makes sense. Let's just uh, inverse the cases. Uh, you are a mentor, and the mentee is in. What happens if that mentee is not ideal? Maybe the first impression was nice, but as time grows, you realize that mentee was not ideal. Uh, what do you do in that scenario? Uh, should I ask the next question, or would you like to answer this yeah, first? Uh, um, I'd probably say, well, that hasn't happened to me, so I haven't got a personal experience with that. But <laughs> um, again, it comes back to if it's not working, you've got to be honest with each other, haven't you? Whoever, we, 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 you know, it's on the canal side, on my side, we've got to be honest with each other. It's not, this relationship's not working. Um, then you've got to make a change, haven't you? You've, you've got to be honest enough to bring that up and raise it and not just carry on for the sake of it if it's not working. Um, and yeah, I, think, I guess in that situation, if, if I felt uh, a mentee was, maybe it was turning up late and it wasn't you know, really taking on board some of the comments and, and things that I'd mentioned from the week, or the, the, the couple of weeks before or something, maybe there'd be a point where I'd say, respectfully, that, you know, this is not working, I'm putting a lot of effort in here, but it's that, not that two-way thing, and that it's the take, but there's no give. So I think um, it would just be bringing that up, make them aware of it, and then hopefully improve. But if ultimately it's not working, then there's that point where it, you, know, you have to still separate. Do you want to add to that? I'll just add one thing, that if it, if, if you're following the framework that we mentioned, it won't happen instantaneously. Because you mentioned that you know, you're reviewing your progress like every three months or whatever. So the point where your mentor would say, hey, this is not working out, would be if you're not, if it's going on for like one iteration, two iteration, three iteration. It won't be like you're doing good, and then on one day your mentor is like, oh, this isn't working. So it's not like this, the graph. The graph is like this. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you so much. That was a beautiful answer. Uh, the second one is just the invert of that. Uh, the uh, the in initial impression of the mentee may not be good, but uh, after some review period, they turn out to be great. So how do you spot that talent? Because I've seen some great talent out there who initially, you know, 
uh, if I am in a group of my community, everyone else might say, okay, uh, this is not an ideal mentee, but I sense that uh, this person has some potential. And after some time, that potential is proved. So how do you spot that potential in the initial phase? Because although that potential might come after some review period, like this graph, but initially it's very hard to detect. So how do you use your experience or any tips like that to spot that initially, which others might uh, you know, just ignore unintentionally? Yeah. I think the first thing comes back to what I mentioned before about getting to understand the person before you get into all the, any formal kind of mentorship understand their interests, what, what motivates them. Every person is an individual, learns in a different way. So if you can understand them, um, how they like to learn, you know, um, do they prefer a very stru more structured approach? Do they need you know, a more fluid approach? So I think it's trying to understand each individual person, what makes them tick, and then trying to come up with a plan that works for them. And then the review process, I guess, if it's not working again, how can we change that up for them? Um, but hopefully just trying to you know, lower the chances of, a, of it not working out by um, trying to understand them to, to start with, spending more time up front to understand that individual. And that hopefully if that trust is there, they're gonna, that will come out in, and they'll be, the best of them will come out you know, as, as time goes on, um, but trying to help them get that out of them, I guess. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I agree. I think yeah. we have time for one more question. Thank you. Yeah, that's one at the front. Hey, I may have missed this at the very beginning of the talk, but can you explain a little bit more about what's going on with CNCF students? With, with CNCF students? Yeah. yeah, we didn't cover it yet. So I was having a conversation with uh, Priyanka, yeah. and I, uh, I have a meeting scheduled for, for after KubeCon because everyone was busy. So the idea with uh, the CNCF students is there's a GitHub repository for now that Bill started. It's not active as of now. Uh, apart from that, there's, uh, there's the, uh, the uh, you know, Nate, uh, about the, the mentorship programs. So there's uh, Google Summer of Code, Outreachy, LFX, and there's one called Cross. Is it Cross, the research one? Yeah, so these are the ones that are really active. And uh, for CNCF students, there's the official community.cncf.io, uh, where there are, that is also active, many events happening. I know some people like Sergio, conducting some events in Spanish and, and things like that. The thing that is missing right now is a structure. So it's not structured, it's like everything is here and there. So you know how you have SIGs and you have like uh, chairs and everything, we don't have that for the student, uh, CNCF student community as of yet. That is what I was speaking to uh, Priyanka about and we will do that after KubeCon. So there's a GitHub repository, CNCF slash students, everything is documented over there. Some new initiatives as well like the CNCF ambassadors, so planning something to do like that with students. Uh, but, but you know, this, everyone's busy, so <laughs> that, that's the progress. And if you want to see the documented stuff, it's CNCF slash students. Thank you for the question. Okay, uh, thank you so much for yeah. your talk. And uh, any last, I mean, I think we have one more question. We might have time for one more. No, just one thing I'll, I'll add as well. Um, we're going to be building this framework, as I mentioned. So if you do want to get involved, either come and see us. Uh, follow Sevo, and we'll announce uh, more details about the, the GitHub link when we've got it and all that kind of stuff related to it. So, um, but yeah, we, we want contributions. We want, want people to challenge this framework and, and come up with something that's quite quite cool yeah. for people. Yeah. And if you're again, if involved, involved in CNCF students, join the CNCF Slack, and there's a students channel. Yeah. Thank you.